Hey, what's going on everyone? So in today's video, we're gonna find out what happens when you put a fan and a heatsink onto the backplate of the 3090 and see what that does to VRAM temperatures. Okay, so what we're gonna do in today's video is I've got my 3090 here and we're gonna put a thermal pad onto the backplate of this 3090. So I think that's gonna help with the heat transfer from the backplate to the heatsink. And obviously I've tested it without the thermal pad already. So I know what the results of that is going to be. So if it turns out to be worse, I'll let you guys know. Now, the heat sinks, I've actually got two types of heat sinks here. And in preliminary testing, it was the small one that actually turned out to be much better than this large one. And that might be because of the material, that might be because of the way it's got a little bit more fins uh, squashed together, so maybe it has more surface area. So I'm not really sure, but uh, looks like the small ones are actually better. So in the results, I'll just have one set of heat sink results, and I'll let you guys know which one it is, but I think it's going to be this small black one. And I've also got a PC case fan. And this one is just a regular Molex PC case fan. This runs at about 1300 RPM. So uh, you can use whatever fan you got lying around at home. Uh, but obviously I think if you use a much faster fan then you'll have better results. Now all of this ended up costing me probably less than $10. So uh, the thermal pad was about a dollar. The heat sinks, these heat sinks were 50 cents each, so I got six of those, so that's $3. And this fan was about $4, so all up is about $8, so a very cheap mod that you can do to hopefully lower your VRAM temperatures. All right, so here's some footage sped up from when I put the thermal pads and heat sinks on the back of the RTX 3090. To be honest, the final temperature results actually didn't turn out as great as I had hoped. Hence, I've just kept this to a short video, but let's talk about the thermal pads first, and I found they didn't actually change the temperatures, if at all. I don't think the thermal conductivity is all that great on them, as they're very cheap. The only difference is that they do stop the heat sinks from sliding around easily. I do advise using a ruler and measuring it all out rather than just doing it by eye. As I said earlier, the big heatsink didn't change the temperatures much at all. So in the results that you're going to see, the heatsinks I used were the little black ones. Let's talk about the mining results first. And I did two types of tests here. One which was the card at default settings in MSI Afterburner with the fan at 90%. And the other where the card was at my optimum undervolt settings with the fan also at 90%. Next, I tested both with just the thermal pads and heat sinks. Finally, with the fan on top of the heat sinks. Each test was done for about 10 minutes. Make sure to check out my undervolt videos if you want to know more about undervolting and optimizing your card for mining and gaming. So as you can see, just by undervolting the card, you can lower temps significantly by 8 degrees. Remember, if the card is at default settings with the default fan settings, the GPU could easily be over 100 degrees in mining. And as I've said in my previous videos, this is mostly due to the G6X memory running hot. Adding a heatsink lowers the temperatures by about 1 to 2 degrees, which isn't very much. But by adding the fan, it did drop by another 2 degrees. Overall, this is not a bad outcome for mining, given where it started, it thermally throttled at 104 degrees for the memory junction temperatures. By running the fans at 90%, we removed 8 degrees, and undervolting it also lowered the temps by 8 degrees. And the heat sink and fans dropped temps by another 4 degrees, giving a final temperature of 84 degrees, which is a difference of about 20 degrees. For gaming, it wasn't as impressive. Just a quick note, I did want to do the test with Cyberpunk 2077, but I accidentally deleted it while trying to install it. But let's talk about Skyrim first, which is heavily modded with about 63 mods. It runs at 5K Ultra and uses the Skyrim re-engaged ENB. As you can see, I only get between 25 to 30 frames per second. The memory junction temperature at default settings with 90% fan was 80 degrees. If you recall in my previous video on Skyrim, the memory junction temperature was 92 degrees. And that was because it was running at the default fan settings at about 40% fan. 
but the heatsink and fan didn't really do much more to lower the temps, it lowered it by just another 2 degrees. Similarly with Red Dead Redemption 2, the temperatures were very similar and the resulting temp drop was just 2 degrees with the heatsink and fan. So I would say the mod is probably unnecessary in gaming and it depends if you want to have this monstrosity in your PC case for just 2 degrees lower temperatures. For mining, I would say if you can find a faster fan, higher than 2000 RPM, better heatsink, maybe copper, and can possibly remove another 2 to 4 degrees, then that would start to look like a good solution. There's also the option of changing out the factory thermal pads and thermal paste, but ultimately it's up to you if you want to open up your card, which may or may not ruin your warranty depending in which country you purchase the card. The results of doing that have also been varied, it's not always a given that changing that out nets you significantly better results. A good time to replace them would be when you notice attempts deteriorating on your card. Alright that's going to be it for this one, if you like this video make sure to click the like button, also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.